Google goes fiber and Samsung doubles up on Apple. I'm Jeff Bacalar filling in once again for Bridget Carey and this is your CNET update. Google has launched a fiber TV and internet service in Kansas City as part of a beta test. The service provides customers with one gigabit per second broadband speed and fiber television that uses an interactive interface. Now you might not get all of your favorite channels with the service, but Google is trying to show the cable providers of the world that this is how content should be delivered. Google hopes that the technology sparks the interest of other companies who are using older communication mediums. Those who sign up for this service, though, will receive one terabyte of Google Drive storage, DVR that can record up to eight shows at once, and hold 500 hours of programming. All this starts at $120, and that is a lot less than what I am paying right now. It doesn't end there with the Google News, though. The latest iOS version of Google Earth is upon us, and it features an insane level of 3D maps detail for some of the major cities around the world. Though only newer iOS devices will be able to handle the 3D features. If you were using Twitter, you might have noticed a brief outage on Thursday. The service went down inexplicably, but early reports are coming in and they are confirming that the world did in fact continue to spin. Samsung has doubled up on Apple, selling more than twice the amount of devices during Q2. And of course, it's no secret that this can be attributed to Samsung's very popular Galaxy S3 phone and of course the calm before the iPhone 5 storm. But it's worth noting that HTC, Motorola, and RIM combined only barely exceeded iPhone sales during the same period of time. Web to TV streamer Roku has successfully ended a round of fundraising raising $45 million through News Corp and British Sky Broadcasting. Of course, it's logical to assume that the sources funding this will influence the content available on Roku products, but there's no word yet on how that's going to play out. eBay's president of global markets, Devin Wenig, said that the company plans on allowing children under the age of 18 to create eBay accounts and begin participating in certain auctions. Wienig reassured us that eBay wouldn't just be giving teenagers unadulterated access to the site, thankfully, and will require all such accounts to be approved and monitored by a parent. This has been your update for what's going on in the world of tech today. For more on the stories from our show, visit CNET.com slash update. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jeff Bacalar. From our CNET TV studios here in New York, thanks for watching.